Hello, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville by fans for fans. I'm Dana Vimo. This is Christopher Draves. And this show is brought to you by Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can give them a call at 414-800-7585 to see, to get all your hockey figure skating, refereeing, and hockey apparel. Um, check them out. they got a great selection of CCM and Bauer gear. Um, on today's docket is... Me playing with my cell phone. Yes, and <clears throat> me pretty much frustrated like the team is. Mm-hmm. So, let's get into this game. Go for it. Are you doing the stats? I thought you were gonna, I thought you were gonna do the other thing before we cover the game. No, uh, we'll cover the game, then do our, our, uh, I'll talk about it, because I can't do the frustrated and then be mad about and them not know. Why uh, oh, happy? this will get you frustrated, and then you can vent. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm just making sure I know how we're doing. All right, <laughs> shots on goal were uh, 38-22 Nashville. Uh, then uh, face-off percentage, 53% Nashville, 47% Dallas. Uh, both teams were 0 for on the power play. Nashville was 0 for 3. Dallas was 0 for 2. Uh, penalty minutes uh, penalty minutes were uh, 6 for the Stars and 4 for the Predators. Hits were 23-15 Nashville. Uh, blocks were uh, 23-7 in favor to, of the Stars. And then giveaways were 8-7 Dallas. All right. Scoring in the second period, because there was none in the first, was Austin Watson with his fifth with an assist from Dan Hamhues, his fourth. Then from there, it's Paul Dallas. So we got... Blake Como was his fourth with an assist from Dickinson, his sixth, and Lindell his eighth. That was shorthanded. Then Rope Hintz got his twelfth uh, with an assist from Dowlin, his second, and Radiloff his eleventh. Then Jamie Oleksiak had got his first with an assist from Radiloff and Sagan. Radiloff's twelfth, Sagan's nineteenth, and then Andrew Cogliano got his second. There was no scoring in the third. Yeah. Let's just, uh, okay, goalies. Uh, Anti Q Dobin stopped 37 of 38 with a 0.974 save percentage. He seems to have the Preds number. Uh, Pe- uh, Pecorine stopped 18 of 22 with a 0.818 save percentage. Uh, referees were Wes McCauley and Garrett Rank. Uh, linesmen were Brad Kovalchik. Kovalchik? And. David Brace. Were you Bra- trying to say that without sounding like you were swearing? I wasn't trying to say Koval Chuck. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, uh, head coach for Dallas is the newly appointed Rick Bowis, Bowness. Uh, head coach for now is Peter LaViolette. Scratches, I like how you said for now. <laughs> scratches for Dallas were Matthias Yanmark and Tyler Fadoon. Scratches, or scratches for Dallas were Matthias Yanmark and Tyler Fadoon. Scratches for Nashville were Matthias Ekholm and Mikel Granlin. Mm. All right. With that being said, let's just read off some of what the players think. Fire away. Fire away. Uh, Pecorine, it's been rough for too long, quoted by Pecorine. He, it's been another tough loss, especially at home by the end of the game. Uh, there was probably half the half the people left the arena, and it makes me obviously embarrassed by the results at home. We've got to be better. Um, and since Watson was right by him, he said, "Frustrating, yes. Embarrassing is another. Oh, embarrassing is another one that kind of covered it. Basically, he's saying that frustrating and embarrassing kind of cover how he felt about the game." It ha- just hasn't been good enough. Um, La Violette. It wasn't about qu- a quantity thing. It was a quality thing. Dallas's chances were better. It's not like we were under siege. Um, mistakes we were making are costing us, and they're too big. We need to quiet the game down defensively and just get quality from that standpoint. Not quantity. Right now, every team is capitalizing. 
they pretty much got those four chances. They scored every one of them. They got oh, they pretty much got got all four of those chances and scored on every one of them. We made a few mistakes, and they made us pay for them. Um, I've got to find a way to at least make some of those saves. Um, this is Peter Laviolette on uh, Colin Blackwell and Yakov Trennan. We invest a lot into the game. I uh, we we invest more into the game than I thought. He he had invested. Um, he played a great hard game. What? what? You're confusing me. How do you say he? I thought he didn't invest a lot. Then you're saying he played a hard game. I swear he's starting to sound like the Packers' old GM. Um, he was attacking the game all night. He was physical and passionate. I thought him and Trennan did the same. Tried to implement the same type of play, and it was noticeable. They were able to move the puck and get into the offensive zone and sustain pressure and establish a four check. Um, Nashville will now fly to New York um, for their next game. Uh, Phil Forsberg did say something. It's always frustrating. It doesn't matter what our previous record is. It happened. It's been happening. It's not good enough. And we need to change it quick. What's your recommendation for the team before we go into my preview in New York? The All right, so is not the Islanders. I'm going to go into something a little bit real quick. All right, so Peter Laviolette's coaching history, um, most people know him for winning the Cup with Carolina in his second year. Um, he took a team from third place in the Southwest to first place in the Southwest, winning 16 of nine games. 16 going 16 and 9 in the what 16 and 9 in the playoffs how do you go 16 and 9 in the playoffs okay unless he lost three games each one and then came back each game went to seven that's the only way you lose nine games without getting eliminated because there's four rounds to each to the playoffs Mm -hmm. um, so he coached for Philadelphia for five years. He is now in his sixth year with the Predators. In his first year with the Predators, he was a first-round exit. Second-round exit, his second year, lost in the Stanley Cup in 2016-2017. 2017-2018, lost in the second round. 2018-2019, uh, lost in the first round. So it seems like we're going backwards now. As far as the coaching staff goes, I say fire them all. Um... Peter Laviolette has obviously, it seems like he has run his course. Kevin McCarthy has not, has, um, not implemented his defensive style at all. Um, and then we have uh, Dan Lambert, who has, was hired to do our power play. Our power play has done jack squat. And... Uh, yeah, how they do on the power play tonight? They were over. Yeah, that's the third game in a row. They're over, over on the power play. And then we have uh, who is that? Uh, Muse. Dan Muse. All of them gone. That's my opinion. Clean out. Off of their heads. I didn't want to say it directly like that, but off of their heads. I could understand the frustration right now. Because even at this point, I'm like, come on. At least the Admirals, when they lose, they get a point. Thank you. All I'm right. I'm not going to talk about them yet. Nope. On to our preview for the New York Rangers. Go. All right. Be right back. Uh, the Predators play the New York Rangers on Monday. Uh, this is their second and final meeting of the year at the Rangers. Their last meeting was on November 2nd. New York beat Nashville 2-1. Uh, to one. All right. Basically, for the Rangers, their line combinations are looking like this. We got uh, Chris Kreider, 10 assists, 7 goals. Then we got Mika Zibanejad, uh, 10 assists, 9 goals. Uh, Pavel, was that Bugnovich? Uh, 14 assists, 5 goals. Then we have Artemi Panarin, 23 assists, 18 goals. Uh, Ryan Stromey, uh, 21 assists, 6 goals. And Capo Capo, uh, 8 assists and 6 goals. Uh, their third line is not too horrible outside of one guy. 
uh, Greg McKaig, uh, two assists, one goal. Then you got Philip, uh, what is that, Philip Scheidel? Scheidel. Uh, eight goals, three assists, and then Jesper Fast, five goals, seven assists. And then their fourth line pairing, I'm not even going to mention. But yeah, they have a solid three lines that you should probably keep an eye on. Most likely, you should probably slow down Artemi Panarin. He's really, really good. The bread man is good. You're supposed to uh, giggle at that. All right, their defensive pairing, you got Brady and, uh, Brady's... Shea. Skeddy. Shea. Whatever. Nine assists, four goals. I right, think you got Jacob Truba, 12 assists, five goals. Uh, their second defensive pairing, you got Mark Stahl, two assists and a goal. Anthony D'Angelo, seven goals, 15 assists. And then the rest of their defensive pairings are pretty much garbage. Outside of uh, Adam Fox, he has 11 assists, five goals. This is going to be a tough game. Like, there's multiple lines with guys that should be uh, definitely on the Predators' radar. Um... Their last five games, though, uh, I would have to say you got to slow down Panarin because he has six goals and two assists in his last five. Uh, you got to keep an eye on Mika Zibanejad. He had five goals in his last five. And then on the defensive front, uh, nobody. So yeah, just keep an eye on those two guys. But like I said, you got a stacked, uh, you got a stacked roster. It's gonna be a tough game. New York's actually improving. So yeah, uh, that's my preview to Rangers. I'll cover the Islanders on Monday, and then I'll cover the San Antonio Rampage for the Admirals on Tuesday. So that's what I, that's all I got. Yeah, you got to do the whole uh, all that carry playing in his 250th AHL game tonight. Uh, yeah, I was just letting you be aware of that. So uh, Well, you should just say point and go, shh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just ruined it for him, my bad. Well, we'll talk about it in a second. Because yeah. there's a lot to talk about when it comes to Carrier. I actually do have an opinion about Carrier. A good opinion or just your typical? Okay, I don't want to beat him over the head with this. Wow. So That's well, impressive. Actually, this year, I'm very happy with our defensive core. You're growing. Um, goaltenders for the New York yeah, Rangers. I I'm not getting sick. Uh, goaltenders for the New York Rangers are Henrik Lundqvist. He has uh, played 19 games, started 18. He is 7-7-3 seven, seven, with a 3.13 goals against average with a .912 save percentage, no shutouts. Uh, then we have Alexander Gregoire, Gregory. Uh, he is it's Greg Wab. Don't call him Gregory. Greg Vary. Greg Grib. Greg Gorov. Greg Gorov. Okay, it's Greg Gorov. <laughs> uh, he's played 15 games, nine wins, five losses, one OT loss, and he has two shutouts. He has a uh, .923 save percentage and a 2.69 goals against average. Um, in their last ten. <coughs> Trying not to die here. Uh, they are 5 3 and 2. In the last 10, the Predators are 5 3 and 2. Oh, uh, do me a favor. Check the injury report for the Rangers because I suppose we should probably do that. Because I don't know if uh, my research that I just gave out there is going to have uh, the accurate line setups. Based on who's injured and who's not. Working on it. Because tonight, basically, uh, Chicago or uh, Dallas basically dominated us with uh, guys that I didn't even make mention because we really didn't pay too much attention to the injury list. Yeah, for like Dallas, I. I believe the line that we didn't talk about is the line that beat us tonight. Yeah, the one we said don't worry about. We got burned by it. <laughs> Maybe we should start focusing on all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, currently, oh, God, Columbus lost to Ottawa. Yeah. Well, anyways, what's the injuries looking like for Dallas? 
I don't know the Rangers are shit, sir. Uh, Dallas only has two. Who are they? Uh, Mark, Ma uh, Hansel and Johns, and then Yen Mark is day to day. Okay. Now, what about the Rangers? Nashville has three. Nashville has Victor Arvidsson, Matias Ekholm is day to day with a sickness or illness. Probably the flu. I'm he guessing. he he. I guess he was really down with the sickness. <laughs> Funny. Um, and then uh, Mikel Granlund's day to day with a lower body injury. Yeah, but what about the Rangers? Uh, L. Helgic, he is day to day with a sprained knee. All right, so apparently the research I did was based off of accurate line combinations coming into it. Cool. Wow, so that site that I use does include your injury. Yep. Hey, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm using a very good website for my research. For those of you who are looking to do research on which players are hurt for which teams, you could go to tsn.ca, type in uh, dash NHL. Hey, we're trying to get people to watch us for that info. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah, but, you know. If people are watching this way, then they could go find it themselves. <laughs> dash injuries. <laughs> yeah. Um, just so you can fact check what we're saying. Yeah, I suppose I should have threw out the name of that site that I used for line combo. Eh, it happens. So, we're ready to talk about the Admiral's uh, uh, game against the Wolves. Yep. All right. Well, Admiral's lose 3-2 to the Rosemont Wolves in overtime. So, they get a point. And extend their point straight to, I believe, six games. Yeah, it, it's been pretty fun. Oh, yeah, congratulations to... Alexander Carrier playing in his 250th game in the AHL. Congratulations, Carrier. I'm impressed, Daniel. You said something nice about him. I've said a lot of nice about him this year. He's the I... Admiral's leading defenseman in points. Okay, so uh, there's no scoring in the first. So shots on goal in the first were 10-6 uh, Chicago. Uh, then in the second period, it was 10-9 Milwaukee. Uh, it's 9-6 Chicago in the third. Overtime, it was 1-1. Chicago outshot is 29-23. Milwaukee 0 for 1 on the power play. Chicago 1 for 2. It was a fairly clean game. They were just playing really good defense from everything I saw. Yeah, each, penal each period had one penalty. Yeah, although Milwaukee's credited with having two infractions for four penalty minutes, and uh, Chicago one for two penalty minutes. Um, all right, so scoring, it was all Brandon Peary in the second, and he scored his fourth goal of the year with an assist from Jimmy Schultz and Lucas Elevens. Uh, Eleven is? Uh, he, Peary's fourth, Schultz eighth, and Elvenus is 21st. Elevenus, or Elvenus, whatever. That guy's good. I warned you guys about him. Uh, Brandon Peary scored his fifth with an assist from Keegan Colasar and Jacob Magna. Uh, Colasar's fifth, Magna's fourth. Then Cole Schneider got his ninth with an assist from Alexander Carrier, his 14th, and Daniel Carr, his 11th. Welcome back, Daniel Carr. Then Laurent Dauphin scored his seventh of the year with an assist from Alexander Carrier, his 14th, and Frederick Gaudreau, his second. Way to go, Freddie. And Carrie got two points on the game. Um, and then Nicholas Waugh scored in OT, uh, his third with an assist from Jimmy Schultz. Three stars of the game were Nicholas Waugh uh, with a goal, uh, Keegan Colasar with an assist, and Brendan Perry with two goals. On my um, not-so-happy-with-you list is Your Steve... crap list. Get it right. Steven Santini, Ellie Tolvin, and Matthew Olivier, Tanner Janot. Uh, Matt Donovan, Josh Wilkins, Jeremy Davies, and that's that, it. Yep. Uh, in net for the Admirals was Connor Ingram. He stopped 26 to 29. In net for the Wolves was Oscar Dansk. He stopped, he stopped 21 of 23. Uh, attendance uh, at the Allstate Arena in Rosemont was uh, 7,327. Ha! We beat him last night. With that attendance, because didn't we have like 8,000 people at the Panther Arena last night? All right, um, there is one thing I am going to ask. I hope he's all right. Uh, Andrew, uh, referees were Andrew Howard and Alex Normandy. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Um, linesmen were Jonathan Sedlak and Sean Morgan. Sean Morgan took a slap shot dump. They slap shot the puck into the zone to dump the puck in, and uh, Morgan took that puck to the head. 
Yeah, it did not look good. He was down for a little while. I mean, he got up on his own power, but he's definitely had his bell rung. So now this year, the Admirals are 3 0 one and one against oh. the Wolves. Well, three and two technically. If you just want to skip out the technicality of shootout overtime. And the Wolves came to play, like I said. Um. The Admirals this year are really, really good. Yeah, I know. Have scored. Uh, we're first to 100 goals now. Woohoo! We have uh, 100 goals with the two we scored. Yeah, what's our goal differential? Or do they not break it down like that for the AHL? We have 90 or 100 goals scored versus 167. Or, I'm sorry, 67 goals oh, against. That's a pretty big differential. And then. Uh, I'm not trying to do the math on camera, but that's a pretty big differential. Um, but yes, we are asking uh, for thoughts with Sean Morgan. He did take a puck off the head. Yeah, I know we ripped zebras, but he did take a slap shot to the head. That's not easy to do. And it's with not. and with that being said, if I took a slap shot to the head, I'd probably be in the hospital. He'd be unconscious. Like I said, I'd probably be in the hospital. You, you'd be like, Mommy, I don't want to go to school today. I want to stay home and bake cookies with you. <laughs> Good old I Daffy. I want to stay home and bake cookies with my mom, on the other hand. Eh, I don't know. I'll take her or leave it. All right, so the I ad- love my mom, but eh. <laughs> um, So the Admirals with that have 45 points, putting them ahead of Tucson by three. Um, the Admirals are on a 3 0 2 Three o two and o streak. This losing really got to stop. It's getting old quick. It's supposed to be a joke. Laugh. Um. We're the only. Oh nope. Uh, Rochester and us are the only team with four or less losses. Yeah. Rockford, I can't believe they're actually playing really well this year. Cause usually they're like where Grand Rapids is, but. Rockford, they're stepping it up this year. I'm impressed. To all you AHL fans who may be bored tomorrow, Rockford's on NHL TV. Boring. Yeah, for all you anti-NFL fans, he meant to say. Yeah, pretty much. For Uh, all you anti-NFL fans, NHL TV has the Rockford Ice Hogs taking on... The Toronto Marlies, so it's an interleague play. Yeah, you'll be able to check out former Milwaukee Admiral Pontus Aberg. No peas up in Toronto. He got caught up? Yep. When? Because last I heard, he was down there in Toronto, and I just read about nope. that like a day or two ago. Nope, he was he was in, well, Toronto and Toronto. He got moved from one side of Toronto to the other. <laughs> Either way, he was with the Marlies from what I read. Nope, as he was, of two days ago, he was with the Marlies. Nope, he's been working on a line with uh, Marner and uh, uh No, Matthew. but they sent him back down, dude. Did they? I could have sworn he did. I could look. No, nah, I could have sworn. As of like two days ago, I swear to God, Aberg was listed with the Marlies. You're right. He was on that Mitch Marner line. That is accurate. He was with the Maple Leafs, but I could have sworn he got sent back down to the Marlies. You know, I do try paying attention to things just like you, buddy. I wouldn't have mentioned it if I didn't read it. No, he's up. Oh, okay. I, like I said, I wouldn't have said anything unless I saw something with... Dude, that's... How do you know he's up? He was deleted from the Toronto Marley to call, recalled by... Recalled from loan by Toronto NHL. Okay. Um, currently... What's the date down there? Uh, the 6th? Today's like the... There's 14th. nothing... The last one was they called up a guy from Newfoundland from the ECHL. All right, never mind. Well, <laughs> fine. You can't watch Pontus Aver. <laughs> nope. Um, currently, the Iowa Wild are losing to the Ontario Reign, um, and Grand Rapids Griffins are losing to the Bakerfield Condors. Well, that's no shock Grand Rapids losing. Have you paid attention to the Red Wings? They're actually doing good this year. Um, looks like tomorrow... Uh, that Rockford's going to get one of those game in hands back from the Admirals. 
and I don't. They're playing the Le- the Leafs yeah. minor league so, system. Man, this is gonna be a whole week full of hockey. You guys are probably gonna get sick of us, but keep supporting us. We're gonna get sick of us. <laughs> our, our numbers are growing. We're already past the seven hundred like mark, which we wanted by the All Star game. Yeah, let's try to get a thousand by the end of the season. Okay, so Sunday's docket for the Central is the Toronto Marlies. Marlies and Rockford, we already talked about. Rain and Iowa Wild, and that's it. Okay, wow, that's a hell of a schedule for the Central. Um, Nothing on Monday. On Tuesday, we got the Wolves and the San Antonio Rampage, which that means the Rampage are playing the back-to-back. Yeah, because we get San Antonio on Wednesday. Um, Rockford versus Laval in Laval. Uh, Moose and uh, Colorado, uh, and Gray Rapids in the Gulf. So, in the entire uh, Central outside of us plays. Yeah. And then we play Wednesday. And we're the only team in our division. Eh? Nope. Wild well, and uh, Stockton. Yep. And Moose in Colorado. All right. So that's that's your up to up to our next game with the Central. Uh, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Dana Gumma. This is Christopher Draves, and our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. Oh, yeah. Fire Lavulet. Weren't we supposed to say that? Yes, please fire Lavulet. Fire the whole coaching staff. See, I was fire trying, us. I, see, I remember to say what your mom requested. And, hey, I got it out there. Fire Lavulet. Yep, me, me and my mom had a conversation. My mom has been a hockey fan, obviously, longer than I have. Uh, but... Leaving me hanging here. You, you. I kind of cut you off out our commercial. Sorry, hockey locker. It just popped into my head. Um, don't forget to check out their uh, inventory. Uh, they are open every day of the week. They close early on weekends, but you can still go there during the weekend. Yep, just go anytime. They close like at four o'clock on Sundays. Yeah. Out of curiosity. Yeah. So uh, go check them out. Uh,